So Midjourney made some love calls with their release of version 5.2 and now I'm back at it. In this video, we're going to be walking through some of their coolest tools, that's the zoom out function, and we're going to be comparing it to Photoshop's generative fill. We're going to do a step-by-step -step process of both for a full comparison. So if you're new to Midjourney or Photoshop, stay tuned until the very end. Let's get started. All right, so Midjourney should default you automatically to their version 5.2. If you want to double check, you just go into slash settings and then you can choose it here, Midjourney version 5.2, and then everything else is there also. Um, as you can see, I generated a couple of images in 5.2 and my goal is to choose one to upscale. That's where you can actually go in and test out the zoom feature. As you can see here, I'm in my um, upscaled versions of these two photos there. Once I click on it, I can see a little bit better. It is a mushroom building in the middle of nowhere. I actually think it's supposed to be Seattle. Okay. So it's actually one by one for now, but you can see there are two buttons down there. There is a zoom out to 1.5 and a zoom out two times. So what we're going to do is click on 1.5 and see what that will look like. And then the other version that I have here is a flower field in California. I think this does look like California when we are not in, not in a drought per se. So if this is a good image. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom out two times. And so you can see the difference. First up, the mushroom building at 1.5. You can see that it was kind of missing part of the building right there. So I did generate uh, different variations of the zoom out version. And in comparison, again, it's going to miss that right there, but we are going to click on this and then you can see now there's actually people standing under it and there's, there's more building to the side. There's more also to the side as well. So you can see the flower here is really, really big, um, in the forefront there. And so their version that they have here now you can see zoomed out, there's a different bush, right? That's really cool. Um, it's just more scenery for you to look at. Like the trail is a little bit better, a little bit deeper road. I know it's hard to see if it's not side by side. So we'll just go ahead and grab that for you. And there you go. Um, you can see right there, this flower is much more zoomed out. The pathway is a little bit smaller too. So that's the beauty of it is that you don't have to rely on other tools or abs or in painting, you know, painting, all that stuff. You can just do it within this and just generate the zoom out feature really easily. A lot of times in the past when I was generating these pictures, I'm like, darn it, it's missing a part of the arm or the shoulder. And now I can get that filled up really easily by upscaling and then selecting the, um, the zoomed version right there. So that is really neat. In custom zoom, that is actually where you can go in and change a couple of things in terms of the prompt. You can even update a lot of stuff in terms of the aspect ratio. And there are only two parameters. That's one, uh, zoom one and zoom two. But if you happen to change any of this, I would recommend change it to zoom one. That just makes it a little bit easier as well. For this tool, I think it's really good especially when I first started on Mint Journey, I was trying to create certain scenes and I got frustrated because there were so many prompts, there were so many trial and error and I couldn't get the picture that I wanted, at least not immediately. So for something like this, I vividly remember that I wanted to see a swing set and I, I couldn't get to see the swing set at all in some photos and now with this, I should be able to. So we're going to test that theory and see if that does work just to see how they do with portraits. If you remember, she was missing part of her hand and now you have a full background with the cherry blossom in the back and even the swing set is completed on this side. It's not perfect because her legs look a bit off for just the placement of it, but this is way easier than just re-prompting and re-rolling and hoping that I get the same character. Like there's no, it's, that was a lot harder and now it's so much easier. We're going to go ahead and take the original image that I upscaled. I uh, believe that was the one up here and we are going to test it in Photoshop because why not? Um, with Photoshop, you do need uh, the beta version. So if you do have Creative Cloud, you can just go ahead and download the beta and um, test it out just like that. And if for some reason you haven't heard of Photoshop like generative fill, I highly recommend you checking this out. You know, Photoshop has been 
a big player in this world for a very long time and now you can actually do it within photoshop is really fun you can see you can type it out you can um, do a lot of ai work so all of these variations within that app so then you can take it to the next level if you already have your uh, photoshop skill sets thing it's it's pretty much done and ready you can see they were changing the generative layer down there and you can even add a couple of things mix it in and you can see they took that scene and just add it to the uh, northern lights there so really fun to check out and i just got my download so i'll go ahead and install this and we're gonna check it out all right so once you open the photoshop beta you can go ahead and see that it popped up the new generative fill that's essentially what most people are using these for um, it's as is newly released there so this is photoshop if you haven't used it um, i recommend checking out all the other videos available um, but this is the most basic so we're going to open the file that i just downloaded and the easiest way for me is always to been drag and drop just so i don't have to open all my files there i have all my necessities in one place already in my other screen so drop that in and again this is the photo that we've been using so if you know how to use it just you can just um go ahead and click on maybe later if you don't this is a really key uh, tool to look at because it, it explains everything that you need to know to make it work right <laughs> see how easy that is they just did the whole fill just just by selecting a couple of things so uh, let's get started with you there um so now we're gonna go ahead and click on the crop tool just like so and then extend any layer that you like like that um you can even zoom out so i just hold my alt key and then start zooming out a little bit there go back on my canvas by holding the space bar there and now we're just going to select everything that's in the background um to do that i'm just going to go ahead and select the layer real quick and or with the square tool like so and then we're just going to do selective fill so i'm going to go ahead and do this and then i'm going to select inverse just so it selects everything else and then click on generative fill and click on agree and then just i'm just going to hit on generate and see what it does for me automatically as you can see there was a little prompt area that you can go in and say hey add this hey add that that is something that you can do to really go in and customize this photo um you can see i kind of miss click there and so there's a line but that is really really cool it can generate the image for me so i can actually fix that um to do that you can select the image or you can as you saw in the tutorial you can highlight this area right here and then again i'm just clicking generative fill and not putting in anything there just so that it does it all for me so it sort of messed up my swing set and that's okay if you don't like it you can just Control z and go back to where it was like so and then just make sure it doesn't do that too much so you can just do a little piece here so just remove that line fill in the gap and you can just say fill in the gap um, but click on generate and i'll get back once i get this fixed up so just like that i was able to remove that weird line right there and if you were to go to your layer section you can really see that it's just these are the added layers so if I wanted to redo it and not mess up like I did earlier, I just uh, click it a little bit better just by selecting what I want to select there and then just go inverse and just, just how I do it really quick there um, and click on generative fill and then click on generate. So this should be a better version and it's always going to create new layers on top of what you already have. Um, so if you want to do more and more and more, you can, you can even make a whole scene Like you could put like this one. I think I typed in an empress clothing. Maybe I can put the emperor next to her. That's, that's totally doable. Um, it's missing her legs, but that's okay. You can go again and you can say, um, add legs, right? Add more legs and dress. So add more dress and legs. Um, this body 
and then just click on generate and see what that would do. Um, adding things, just let's say I want to add a bird sitting on the branch behind her, I can. I can change the cherry blossoms, I don't like it. I can change it to maybe roses. I don't know why roses are up in a tree, but you can in the fantasy land. Um, that is the best part about this is that it's so customizable in terms of photoshop you can circle what you want like this and then just have it done for you and if you don't know what to say you can just ask it to fix it so let's say i want it more realistic so um add you know ancient china shoes right so just generate that in and see if that can figure it out for me i know that's like a little bit off they shouldn't be showing any legs there um but right this is not really difficult to use either if you know photoshop this is the way to do it and if you don't that's fine um i suggest using mid journey and just getting your zoomed out version that you like first once you get there you can really use this tool to um Go in and customize your details. Go in and change what you want. Add what you need. Maybe you want more flowy dress, right? You can add them here. So that's the fun part of uh, Photoshop is that you can now customize and this AI tool is so powerful. Higher quality pictures. You know for sure that this is can be easily upscaled, can be easily saved, higher resolution. Um, go from the artwork or just go from the design that you created or the world that you created and make it even better so all in all i highly recommend checking out mid journey the new version there and then checking out photoshop if you don't have photoshop you can sign up for a free trial it's just a seven day free trial for new users and then just go on and just keep exploring let me know how it goes thanks for watching